Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson. This is Management 2. We are now on Chapter 14. You only have one more chapter to go. Uh, chapter 14 is on the basic elements of control. Learning outcomes for this chapter are explain the purpose of control, identify different types of control, and there are many, and describe the steps in the control processes. Uh, identify and explain the three forms of operations control, describe budgets and other tools for finance control, financial control, uh, budgets that you should have at your company, you should also have a personal budget. Identify and distinguish uh, between two opposing forms of structural control, discuss the relationship between strategy and control, and identify characteristics of effective control, why people resist control, that is a big problem in organizations, and how managers can overcome this resistance. I want you to read Management in Action, as always. Great stories to learn about uh, Chrysler and uh, their position, uh, how their position was in the United States, and uh, what it's become today, how they've uh, gone you know, to the side and then, and then come back a little bit stronger. Uh, the nature of control. Uh, control is the regulation of organizational activities uh, in such a way as to facilitate goal attainment. So it could be uh, control in the matter of fact that you need to be at work on time every day. It could be control uh, in regards to the fact that the sales team needs to hit their quotas. There are different controls in all kinds of different uh, areas. Uh, could be budget. You have to control the budget. And as you'll see in one of the videos that I posted, uh, control definitely has a lot to do with, uh, with finance and, and things that, that can uh, happen that you uh, really don't want to happen within your company. Uh, so control helps the organization. These are the four different things and not the only four things that, that it helps uh, adapt to the environmental change, limit the accumulation of error, right? The less errors, the more money we keep, uh, minimize costs. Also, the more money we keep. Remember, if a company can't make more money, then they have to save more money uh, and then also uh, cope with organizational complexity. Uh, so the purpose of control, control is one of the Four basic management functions in organization. Remember, we have planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. Uh, the control function, in turn, has four basic purposes. Properly designed control systems that can fulfill each of these purposes. Uh, so, you know, read through the chapter. You'll see about minimizing costs, uh, minimizing errors, things of that uh, nature. And those are the type of control, uh, quality control, audit control. You put those measures in place so that you don't lose money. So, for instance, if I'm making tables, uh, if I catch the error before it goes out, that's good. Uh, if I catch the error before it happens, that's great. If I catch the error when somebody sends the broken down table back to me, then that's actually terrible. Uh, tough times, tough choices. I want you guys to read Engineering Time. Uh, I have a video posted about FedEx, talks about their operational control. Be sure to watch those supplemental videos. They are great. They're not long, so I expect for you to watch them uh, and post a reply about those videos because they're things that can uh, help you uh, take a different perspective uh, in your organization and also in your personal life. Uh, operations control is uh, focuses on the processes that the organization uses to transform resources into products or services. Right, so operational control is basically controlling your people and your resources in order to put out your product and/or service that people will purchase from you. Uh, financial control is concerned with the organization's financial resources. Do you need financial control? 1,000% you do. I used to work for a company, uh, individual embezzled about $250,000 before uh, they got caught. Uh, how was she doing this? Well, she had an individual who was in the accounting department who was assisting uh, with, the, with the embezzlement. As long as you had that person paid off, then they would rubber stamp all of uh, the invoices that you submitted. Uh, levels of control. Managers use control at several different levels. The most basic levels of control in organizations are strategic, structural, operations, and financial. Uh, each level must be managed properly uh, if control is to be most effective. And as you go through the chapter, you see a section on each one of these. Please read it. You see strategic as normal is all the way at the top because this is top level uh, decision making. Structural and this is where tactical would be and operations and uh, financial control is where operational would be. So remember, go strategy uh, st uh, strategic, tactical, operational. That's how it flows. Uh, <clears throat> Structural control concerned with how the elements of the organization's structure are serving their intended purposes. So is our structure set up uh, in order for us to achieve our, our primary goals? Strategic control focuses on how effectively the organization's strategies are succeeding are succeeding in helping the organization meet its goals, right? So uh, are we meeting our goals through these uh, different strategies that are put in place through our strategic control that's set by upper management. 
The controller uh, is a position that organize that in organizations that helps line managers with their control activities. So uh, you have managers, but they can't always figure out all of the bigger pictures. So sometimes this controller steps in and can assist with that. And these are the steps in the control process. So be sure to uh, examine and understand this very clearly. So you establish the standards, you measure performance, you compare performance against the, uh, the standards, and you determine the need for corrective action, right? Because nothing that we put in the first time is 100% perfect. Uh, and then through uh, determining the need for corrective actions, you either maintain the status quo, correct the deviation, and then change the standards. Might be that our standards are too low. I say I want you to sell $100,000 widget, $100,000 worth of widgets. You sell $200,000. I need to up your your quota uh, because you can sell much more than that. Uh, steps in the control, pro control process, having an effective control system can help to ensure that the organization achieves its goals. Implementing a control system, however, is a systematic process that generally proceeds through four internal interrelated steps, uh, which we just went through. Uh, and speaking of the control standard, uh, target against which subsequent performances will be compared. So this is the standard. You have to come in at 8 o'clock every day. That is the standard, right? Not 8.15, not 8.30, not 8.02. Uh, the control standard is set. The standard is that you need to sell 50 widgets. If you don't sell 50 widgets in a month, you are below standard. If you sell 75, you are above standard. Uh, so here, uh, Taco Bell fast food restaurant, for example, work toward uh, the following service standards. A minimum of 95% of customers will be greeted within three minutes of their arrival. Uh, to me, that seems like a long time, but it is Taco Bell. Uh, Preheated tortilla, tortilla chips uh, will not sit in the warmer more than 30 minutes before they are served to customers or discarded. Right. So I guess if they've been there 30 minutes, then they go ahead and throw them away. But because it's Taco Bell, they probably don't have to wait that long because people are coming in to buy them. Uh, empty tables will be clean within five minutes after being vacated. And these are their standards that are set in place, and they keep people to know, hey, you know, five minutes, I need to go out there and, and do a sweep and clean all the tables. And it's, it's good to have those set in place. If you just have people just out there, you know, kind of on their own, just doing their own thing without any goals or standards or smart goals, as, we, as we've spoken about before, then they won't reach uh, the desired goals. Uh, so be sure to read that. Anyone that you see on a, you know, with the picture and the caption, be sure to pay close attention to that uh, because they, they're there for a reason, good learning opportunities. Operations control focuses on the processes the organization uses to transform resources into products or services. And this is your mainstay, the main things that you do. Uh, operational director, manager, uh, supervisor deals with the day-to-day -day activities. Uh, preliminary control attempts to monitor the quality or quantity of financial, physical, human, and information resources before they actually become part of the system. Right, So that's our audit, uh, our pre-audit, our pre-mortem audit system so we want to make sure that if we find these like they say if, if if you catch it before anybody sees it then it's not a mistake so if i catch it before we start making that table hey our design is flawed let's fix this part then that's that's ideal situation right uh let a little less ideal is that we catch it before it goes out the door and then we scrap it and then we you know we sit we uh create a new one uh least ideal is that it goes out the door somebody gets it and it breaks and then they send it back to us because that costs the company company money uh screening control relies heavily on feedback processes during the transformation uh process so uh you know so you see the key word right there is feedback. Uh, you know, get a lot of feedback, then we can improve a process. If you don't get a lot of feedback, then you cannot uh, uh, create, uh, you cannot fix a, a process that's been creative. So check it out. Uh, so this is a, a feedback, uh, and this is how it goes. You have the input. So preliminary control focus on inputs to the organizational system. Inputs, they go here. Transformation. Screening control focuses on how inputs are being transformed into outputs, right? So first we have the inputs here, then we want to see how they're being transformed into outputs, make sure that if we need to fix anything in this process, we do so. And outputs, uh, post-action control focuses on the outputs of the from the organization system, right? Did they look good? Did people like them? What was wrong about them? Let's get some feedback, let's send out some surveys, and let's fix whatever is wrong with them. Uh, most organizations uh, develop multiple control systems that incorporate all three basic forms of control. For example, a publishing company that produces a book screens inputs by hiring only qualified employees, right? We only want the right people. 
typesetters and printers. Uh, this is your preliminary control. In addition, quality is checked during the transformation process, uh, such as after the manuscript is typeset. So that's the screening control. So first we get the right people in, and then we make sure we're doing the right things in the process. And the outputs uh, is a printed and bound books are checked before they are shipped uh, from the bindery, uh, and that's our post-action control. So we're done with everything, and now we want to check the book before it goes out the door because we don't want to lose any money. And as we just referenced to Post-action control monitors the outputs or results of the organization after the transformation process is actually complete. Uh, financial controls concerned with the organization's financial structure. Uh, like I said, I put a video uh, in the modules about that. I want you to check it out. It's really good. And then also the example that I gave you of someone embezzling money. You have to have these financial uh, checks and balances in place. Uh, you can't have somebody just running wild with the balance sheet and the income statement uh, because they can do all kinds of things with the company's money. A budget, also put a budget video on there. Uh, more refers to your own budget as an individual, so I want you to read that. We all could do better in terms of having a budget, uh, myself included. Uh, maybe that's one of the things I'll try to work on, put on my uh, uh, my list of, of things I want to get accomplished in 2016. Uh, but a budget is a plan expressed in numerical terms. Uh, it's good for companies to know what the budget is, know what you can spend, and budgets are set for a reason. You should know what your budget is before you go shopping, as opposed to just going shopping and then at the end of the shopping day saying, oh, you know, I don't have enough money for lunch for the next three weeks. Uh, developing budgets in organizations. I want you to read this on your own. Different types of budgets, uh, financial budget, and then sources and uses of cash. Right, so you get a cash flow, capital expenditures, balance sheet. Right, so how companies need to have cash on hand for certain things, capital expenditures, so major assets they bought, you know, new plant, new machinery, operating budget, sales or revenue budget, and that's you know department I currently work in. Uh, we I don't work in sales currently. I have before. But we have sales, money coming in, and the revenue budget for operations that we spend. So those two together is our total uh, budget. Expense budget, how much can we spend on travel, uh, things for the for the employees, things of that nature. Profit budget, non-monetary budget. So we have to look at our labor and our space budget, right? Because we are on a budget on how many people we can hire and also how much space we can actually use, how many uh, you know new buildings do we need. So uh, all kind of different budgets that you can see. Some people just think it's one type of budget. No, it's many, many different types of, of budgets. Uh, I want you to be sure to uh, check out that diagram as well, uh, developing budgets in organizations. Uh, most organizations use the same budget process uh, to develop budgets. Operating units are requested to submit their budget request uh, to divisions. These divisions in turn compile unit budgets and submit their own budgets to organizations. Uh, an organizational budget is compiled for approval by the budget committee, controller, and CEO. They're the ones that say, hey, this budget is okay or, or it's not. And uh, what people have to remember is that when you're doing budgets, you always start with the sales budget. It may not specifically say that in the book, but let me make it make sense for you. Uh, sales says this is how much we predict that we're going to sell for this year. Then you can create the other budgets because this is how many people I need to make this many widgets. And this is how many people I need to do customer service for the mid widgets that were sold. So it all always starts with the, with the sales uh, budget and the sales projections. Uh, financial statement profile of some aspects of the organization's financial circumstances. Just need to know what these are. Financial statement, balance sheet, income statement. Uh, balance sheet is a list of assets and liabilities. Assets good, liabilities bad, but you have liabilities. So we should say assets plus liabilities negative uh, of an organization at a specific point in time. Uh, the income statement is a summary of financial performance over a period of time, usually a year. Right, So you have your income statement for you know what the company's done within that year. Uh, ratio analysis uh, is a calculation of one or more financial ratios to assess some aspect of the organization's financial health. All kind of different ones in your accounting class. Uh, you'll see specifically which uh, different ones uh, different companies use. Audits definitely need audits. You need internal audits. You need external auditors uh, to assist uh, SOX compliance, things of that nature. Uh, it's an independent appraisal of an organization's accounting, financial, and operational system. So when you deal with financial accounting, you have to adhere to the GAAP, which is a generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, when you deal with managerial accounting, it's just what you want to do in-house. So you know, if you want to put yellow frogs to designate $100,000, you can do that in managerial accounting, but not financial accounting, especially if you're a publicly traded company, because that's what's facing outward uh, and what people and investors can actually see. Uh, structural control, be sure to uh, to check that out. Um, you have a bureaucratic control. That means when you see a bureaucratic, that means a lot of red tape to 
cut through. Uh, decentralized control, that means that uh, like in certain organizations, you have the East, the Midwest, the South, and, and the West, and you have it decentralized because people can make decisions in each one of their areas. Now, of course, they funnel up and talk to the president about what they're doing, uh, but, uh, but, but they have decentralized control so they can make most of the decisions they've been empowered to do so. Uh, so bureaucratic control, employee compliance, strict rules, formal controls, uh, rigid hierarchy, uh, things of that nature. Decentralized has employee commitment, group norms, and the culture, uh, flat structure, directed at group performance. Right. Uh, so and this is the dimension. So this is a goal. Of, this is a goal. This is the degree of formality, right? Is it really formal? Uh, this very formal, not as much. Performance expectations, what they expect. Organizational design, right? This is flat, meaning, you know, it goes like that. And, you know, then you have one person. They're tall structure. That means it goes up like that in a pyramid. And it's very bureaucratic because you have to all, all, all the people all the, all the way up to the top. Different reward systems. This is directed at individual performance. This is directed at the group. I remember having a, a customer service team, and they always had the individual um results on the on this big board and i said you know what let's erase those let's only put the group uh things up there every let's get behind the group everybody support the group i'll deal with the people who are who are failing or lacking in terms of their uh individual goals uh limited and formal participation uh bureaucratic side and extended and informal participation on the decentralized side uh, organizational control generally falls somewhere between two extremes of bureaucratic and decentralized control. McDonald's uses bureaucratic control, whereas Starbucks uses decentralized control. Both very successful organizations, so you can't really knock it and say one uh, structure is better than the other, but you can say one structure fits one company better than the other. Uh, bureaucratic control, form of organizational control characterized by formal and mechanistic structural arrangements, right? You need to ask me, then I need to ask my boss, and my boss needs to ask his boss in order to get a decision. Decentralized control versus centralized. Centralized means one person is making a decision. Decentralized is many people can make decisions. An approach to organizational control based on informal and organic structural arrangements, right? Uh, decentralized control works really well. Uh, in my organization. A strategic control control aimed at ensuring that the organization is maintaining an effective alignment with its environment and moving toward achieving strategic goals. Uh, you know, kind of repetitive, but you know, we, we continue to talk about that. It goes strategic, tactical, and operational. As long as you remember the flow of those three, uh, then you're in good shape. <clears throat> All right, balancing control with fun, and that's that's a big thing. You do need to have control, but you also need to have fun in an organization. People are there more than they're at home, so uh, people people need fun. They need things to be interesting. Need things to, to help them out along the way. So managers sometimes we have to have to realize that, and not too much too much fun because you won't get any work done. Uh, but you do have to have some uh, fun in the organization, make things somewhat light in order to help that individual get through the day. And maybe you need help by uh, getting through the day as well. Overcoming resistance to control, you know, we've already talked about that. A lot of times control helps people, you know, uh, overcome the resistance. Sometimes uh, they don't want to overcome it because of the actual control. And it depends on that 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 individual uh, you know, manager to say, are my controls too rigid uh, or are my controls not rigid enough? Uh, so you want to always encourage employee participation. If you're not participating, then you're, you are taking something away from the group. You need to participate uh, with the group. And that's something that I had to learn um, in my, my career. At first, I was like, ah, you know what, I've got, you know, that's the work stuff. This is up here. But you do have to participate with the group and, you know, give some of yourself to the group in order for it to be successful, in order for yourself to be successful as well. Uh, well we're at the end of Chapter 14. Uh, now at the summary of learning outcomes and key points, be sure, don't just stop there with the video. Be sure, read your text, watch the, you know, watch the supplemental videos. Take your quiz and be sure to go over the summary because it gives a good synopsis over, uh, you know, what the book is stating. Even if it's some overarching uh, thing that I did not touch on or skipped over, uh, you'll have it right there with the with the summary and all the extra things that are at the uh, at the end of the chapter. Uh, so that's it for chapter 14. You only have one more. You'll have to listen to me for one more lecture uh, for chapter 15. Uh, so uh, be sure to do everything on the checklist, checklist on the announcements uh, for this week. Uh, and as always, I want you guys to all have a good day and a great week.